it's going to be all about the binding. It does actually land on him. Can they lock him up? Ignite is down. Flash from Cornet. And the first one does come in. Gage is going to get focused on Svenska and kicks him back into the team. SK turn around. Quickly focus on towards him. As he lands onto Soaz, gets the other side of him. Kicks him back across the screen there. Will he be able to catch it? Doesn't matter because Jankos comes in and finishes the job. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our final day of this Super Week in the European League of Legends Championship Series. I'm Joe Miller here with Trevor Quickshot Henry, and we're coming to you live from our studios in Cologne, Germany, as our teams continue to battle through the summer split. Thank you very much, Joe Smith. Over the last two days and 11 matches, we've seen the standings sway, and with five more games to play today, there's still a chance for the bottom teams to try and make up some ground in the table. But first, hey. let's take a quick look at the highlights from yesterday's matches. We finally saw the Skarner that people were talking about, and it was Diamond who picked him up twice, but both games ended in a loss. Yeah, we've heard a lot of whispers regarding the Crystal Scorpion and his potential in 4.10 with some of the changes to the other junglers, but I was definitely left wanting after yesterday's performances. Yeah. I'd like to see some other teams running him, though, because Gambit were really bullied in both of their matches. And SK Gaming are currently on the downswing, having lost three out of their last five games games and even though they're still in second place they're now in a tie with Fnatic. They were picked apart yesterday by Alliance and then the super hot crew just outclassed them. So SK Gaming surrendered their game against Alliance in 21 minutes which is the fastest a game has ended all year for NA and NU. Uh, EU rather. Uh, they just haven't had the best of luck. Uh, over the last few patches, the champions that they're playing, which were instrumental in multiple roles, have fallen out of favor. Mm -hmm. And the team is just becoming slightly less relevant with their picks and bans. So they need to adapt if they want to return to that dominant form that we've seen in spring. And the other hot story has to be the incredibly strong showings from Fnatic. They've secured three wins in the week and will be doing battle with Alliance today for a potentially perfect Super Week. And it's great to see Fnatic back in fantastic form. They've shown the depth all in all of the games this week and it's going to become a matter of whether or not they can keep that up or if they're peaking too early before playoffs because that's the important matter as we're in the second half of the split and of course there were some huge moments that had you guys lighting up twitter let's take a look at three of your favorite hashtag lcs big plays first up was from gambit versus Fnatic, and features soaz turning the tables on darian this one came from at work oz the real that soaz kick on darian just made me jump out of my chair this is the third most talked about play and most likely back away, unless he's very aggressive, because he's very far off, there's not a lot of wards. Oh, Darian has been completely baited into that one! Well, <laughs> that was pretty sick stuff from Soaz, though, just diving behind him as he dashed forward, kicked him into tower range, Yellow Star actually popping his ultimate, which he didn't really need in the end. Darian being somewhat, I feel, outsmarted there <laughs> on the top side of the map. Sound like you fell out of your chair as well, It was Joe. a genuine laugh. It really was. Well, the next one comes to us. Uh, it was Kevin's four-man attack from the Millennium versus Gambit match. It was from Arreganto. He says, Kevin with an amazing four-man stun. Just wow. This was your second big play. There's a wild growth to save Diamond and to get the knock-up onto Kev. When he's on you, comes in. Kevin dives in from the top side. And he flashes wow. counter-strike onto four men. And that is another four for nothing here. Brilliant. This time, Kevin. Flash with the Counter-Strike gets four. Really brilliant play. Last second on the Counter-Strike from Kevin there. And last but not least, there was Selfie's dominating plays during the Super Hot Crew's upset over SK Gaming. This one came from at Darpool and said, Selfie should get some hashtag LTS big plays for that swag flag teleport into that fight. This was your most talked about moment in yesterday's European LCS. going to give note on that one. There's nowhere to teleport. He's using the flag to get on towards. That means he's going to put him in amongst SK Gaming. Quick, it does wow. the it and rate it. Just drop where he stands, could do a thing about that one. Freddy's taken very low as well. It's Candy Panda, they want to get on. Jensen in trouble. He has to use the Zonya's Argus intervention on himself. He goes down. Selfie just motors on through the rest of the team. Candy Panda focuses on, he gets dropped down. And in dramatic fashion, the super hot crew find SK Gaming, melt SK Gaming. What a good team fight.
all three of our plays brought to you by WOW, apparently. Anyways, you guys at home, if you want to highlight your big plays from today's game, send them our way on Twitter, at LOL Esports, and use the hashtag LCS Big Plays. And before we get into today's games, let's see where the teams currently stand. We have Alliance. Well, what should we really say about Alliance? They're 14 and 2, they own that first place, and they are the team to beat. Okay, I completely agree. In fact, you have to go four games down to find second place, which is where Fnatic and SK Gaming are tied with 10 wins and 7 losses in a tie for fourth. We have Millennium and the Super Hot Crew at 9 and 8, and struggling down at the bottom, we have Gambit and the Wolves, who are both looking to find what it takes to find a win on the last day of Super Week. And we'll start things off today with the Copenhagen Wolves taking on first place Alliance, and then Millennium will face the Super Hot Crew. After that, SK Gaming will take on the Copenhagen Wolves, then Alliance will face off against Fnatic, potentially for the perfect 4 0 week. And we'll end the Super Week with Gamma Gaming versus Rock Axe. And to find more information about the schedule, the teams, the players, head over to lolesports.com where you can find all of that and much more. Yeah, and while you're there, make sure to vote on today's matchups. Just pick the team that you think will win on the schedule and we'll check in before each match to see how all you guys voted. And with four weeks left in the summer split, you can find out how you can join us here in the Cologne studio to watch the LCS Live. Just click on tickets at the top of the page for all those details. Now, I'd like you to head to Twitter and let us know which player is the backbone of your favorite European LCS team and why. Try to answer these questions every time, but as an impartial shoutcast, I don't have a favorite team, except for the production team. So for everyone behind the camera, they're the real backbone of the LCS. Lame. But in all seriousness, which player from a team competing in the LCS do you guys at home feel is the backbone and why? Send your answers to us at LOL Esports and use that hashtag LCS. We'll also read some of our favorite responses later in the show. So the first game of the day features the Copenhagen Wolves versus Alliance. The Wolves previously lost to Rockat, and yesterday they got obliterated by the Super Hot Crew. For the Wolves, their summer split has gone from bad to even worse, as their 3 and 13 record is a very rapidly turning into a possible promotion tournament slot. The Wolves do not appear to have reached the same level of performance that they had in the spring split ever since they lost Amazing and Forgiven. Yeah, so if we compare the Wolves after 16 games in the spring split, that actually accrued eight wins and eight losses. However, this summer, they are at three wins and 13 losses. And truthfully, the Wolves have not found any sort of consistency and they've tried multiple team compositions. They just can't seem to find anything that works for them. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but ever since losing Amazing and Forgiven, they simply have not been as competitive or at the same level. Airwax and Woolite have had moments of brilliance, but those moments are few and far between and not sufficient enough to actually help the team secure wins. Everybody needs to start picking it up if they want to turn this around. Indeed, and meanwhile, Alliance come into this match looking to equal and hopefully for them better the longest winning streak in European LCS history. The stretch of nine wins in a row was previously set by Fnatic in the spring split of 2013, and Alliance will definitely be hoping to shatter that record. And while we're talking about split scores, if Alliance continue their winning ways, they will need to hit 21 wins and two losses if they want to top Cloud9's incredible run from the summer of last year. Joe, truthfully, Alliance are just performing on another level entirely, over and above everyone else in Europe. And simply put, I've got nothing but praise for them. If you look at their roles, they are first or second in KDA in every second role. And thanks to those high numbers, their overall team KDA is first. Because of all the wins and their performances, they've got the highest goal per minute at nearly 350. And because of their 14 and 2 record, they also have the most Barons and the most towers secured. They simply are the best team in Europe, without a doubt. And this is going to be an uphill battle for the Wolves. I do want to highlight that yesterday, Young Buck did say on Twitter, look, we're struggling. Super Week is two games left. Maybe we'll pull some special tactics out and we'll have to see what he does. Well, last time he said that, he brought out the Heimerdinger in the top lane, so we can uh, expect something maybe a little bit special this time from the Wolves. But first, let's check out the starting lineups. On the blue side today will be the Copenhagen Wolves, with Youngbuck in the top lane, Airwax in the jungle, Kautard in the mid, Woolite the AD carry, and Unlimited on support. And on the red side, it is Alliance, with Wicked up top, Shook playing jungle, Froggen in the mid, Tabs as AD carry, and Nif as a support. So let's take a quick look then and see how you guys predicted this match will play out. No real surprise, but according to the votes, you picked Alliance by a whopping 90%. That is a massive amount, and interestingly, it's not their strongest vote. We've seen more fans in favor of Alliance in the past, and just considering the performances and, and how good Alliance are looking, the pressure's on them, all right? Copenhagen Wolves, everyone's expecting them to lose. So it's up to Alliance to deliver, and maybe if the Wolves can surprise Alliance, catch them off guard, 
that could be a way into this game. So let's talk about bans and picks then and what we're expecting to see in this game today. The obvious ones of Kaelin Cassidy going to be taking out the, the, the equation. I'm wondering if Yasuo is going to make it through. We've seen Kautard running it yesterday. We've mm -hmm. seen Froggen playing it in the past. But a big question for me is whether or not Shook's going to get Lee Sin. You know, Shook has only played Lee Sin and Lee So Evelyn uh, in all of his games The split, which shows good picks and bans theory from Alliance, but it also tells you none of the other teams are focusing the jungle threat. They are more afraid of either Froggen or Tabs or trying to put Wicked on something uncomfortable. So we'll see what the Wolves prioritize today. Well, let's see then, because Ban's actually coming in pretty quickly in this game, and so far, there's a lot of focus on that mid lane. We see Twisted Fate, Lulu, and Nivea banned out by the Copenhagen Wolves, Cassidy, Ziggs, and Kale banned out there by Alliance, and that leaves the Lee Sin open, a champion that both Airwax and Shook have really shone on. Um, and I think that may well just be the first pick here. It's it's definitely something that can work in the Wolves' favor, but when you consider that Elise as well as Evelyn are up and available, I would dare argue a different pick may have been somewhat smarter. Getting a priority support, maybe taking away Lucian, if that is something that Woolite wanted to, to run. Keep in mind, Woolite was the first player in Europe to play Ash this year. And it wasn't the strongest of performances, but that was based on uh, the team's decision and their movements around the map. So very quick picks and bans from both of these teams in the first game of day three. Yeah, Alliance actually locking in a support in the form of Nami and taking Orianna at a very early stage here. Interesting with so much focus on that mid lane when it comes to the bans here, what Kautard's going to go for. My instinct is telling me Yasuo though. It's something that he can run with, but Rasio, well, no, Yasuo will have a fairly difficult time in the laning phase against Orion, obviously thanks to the range and the zoning power that uh, Froggen's going to have with his command attacks. What I do like about the Orion lock-in from Alliance is because you've got five and a half mid lane bands, Lulu who can go top and middle, it means that Froggen is locked a, a, a secured a champion that has a very strong laning phase that can bully most of the champions that you want to run middle. And it also limits some of your options. Uh, keep in mind, Froggen also set one of the fastest 300 CS records just two weeks ago on this very champion. And he actually told me earlier on, Joe, how many Wraith camps do you think mid laners are going to take today? And I said, well, honestly, Froggen, I've got no idea. What's that for a question? Uh, and actually, I should have probably expected it since he's picking Orianna into this one. So giving me some hints without actually giving me any hints in reality. We'll see what Alliance actually lock in here. Cogmore for Tabs, who looks a little bit tired there, having a big yawn. I'm just saying, guys, probably not going to be Teemo. No, I don't think it will be. I want to highlight what Copenhagen Wolves have locked around this rise. They've got late game scaling, a strong front line with Rise. It is counterbalanced by obviously a strong laning phase, uh, ganking jungler in the form of Lee Sin. Youngblood is not really the type that I would imagine taking Lee Sin top, and the only reason I call that out is how well Soez has done with it this week. Regardless, what I'd like to see from Woolite and the rest of the Wolves is this Lee Sin and Twitch roaming around, maybe trying to help out Rise in the early stages of the game. And if they can accelerate the rate at which he can find kills and arm. Um, opportunities that might help Copenhagen Wolves in the long run. But they don't have a super strong early to mid game team fight because they need items on both Rise and potentially Jax in the scenario. Yeah, and Wolves. If you think back to the last time they played Alliance scores, the last game in London, it was actually a really, really good game where Alliance looked to be getting off to that typical Dream Alliance start of getting kills, taking towers and what have you. But the Wolves showed some real character to hold on to that one. And they're going to have a similar thing on their hands today where they're getting stronger as things go on, as Rise builds up, as Jax builds up. They've also picked in Brom as a support. So this kind of composition that you see from the Wolves, Alliance has already defeated this week. Um, when they took down the Super Hot crew, Alliance were up against a late game scaling team. And, uh, you know, they handled them very, very well. They bought time. If I'm looking back at the... Uh, team composition, it was Brown, it was Shivana, and it was Rise for Super Hot Crew. Alliance got an early lead, then all of a sudden Super Hot Crew were winning some team fights in the mid, mid to late game, and Alliance just moved around the map and forced objectives in a smarter time frame. For Copenhagen Wolves, the key is going to be getting Jax unlocked while simultaneously getting Rise farm. If either of them can get kills, obviously that's a big bonus. And the tools to allowing the split push and getting those lanes working, in my opinion, will be good roaming from either this Woolite Twitch or Airwax on Lee Sin. Because if they don't get ahead, it's going to be fairly easy for a Shivani elise Oriana combo to get damage down on a fairly linear type of team composition from Copenhagen Wolves.
got to get off to a good start. And therefore, you have to say that Airwax is probably the key man once again here for the Copenhagen Wolves. Bit of power, extra early power there with Lee Sin. We'll see if he can actually get things rolling either for Youngbuck in the top lane or Countard in the middle. For an alliance though, as you mentioned, Oriana, a champion which we've seen everyone farm into incredible kind of levels with. Shivana as well in that top lane for Wicked gives you that extra added ball delivery system with his ultimate. So there's the, the makings of a wombo combo on the side of Alliance. If a Shivana dives in, if Nami's tidal wave is there. But what is good about the composition is they're well-rounded. They have fairly strong engage, fairly strong flank. They've got strong disengage with Nami. So they have the jack of all trades, so to speak. And it's just going to be up to Alliance to pick the right moments to engage or disengage. Well, now that the players have picked their champions, which lineup do you guys think is stronger? Tweet hashtag CWWin or all win to at LOL Esports to let us know. And we'll check the results in game. 90% was the vote from lolesports.com. I don't think it's going to change in terms of who you guys are voting for, but I think the percentage might drop a little bit. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, you've got quite a, uh, a few strong champions on the side of Copenhagen Wolves. Twitch has been somewhat hit in terms of his champion numbers in 4.10, but the itemization is more in his favor. So if mm -hmm. he can get to the likes of that Ghost Blade, Blade of the Rune King, maybe Infinity Edge stage, he has the ability to just shred through all of the members of Alliance. And we'll see if Copenhagen Wolves can get there. Well, let's have a look. We are going into game for the Copenhagen Wolves versus Alliance. Two very different stories that these teams have. Opposite ends of the spectrum almost with the Copenhagen Wolves lacking behind the rest of the league in last place and Alliance destroying pretty much everyone. Only lost two games so far this split. Yeah, the first thing I want to highlight is Unlimited starting with a all-consumables kickoff. Got a bunch of wards as well as the cookie. And for Unlimited, this is going to be one of two things. Either Copenhagen Wolves want to use that vision to make some early plays and get maybe jungle invades down or roams around the map. Uh, thanks to Brahm's passive and the, the ambush power of Twitch, you can actually set up very good sort of ganks. Alternatively, it's gonna be an incredibly defensive start for Woolite and Unlimited, and they're just gonna play the extended vision game to ensure that Shook doesn't land any, you know, three, four, five minute ganks. Well, there is the pink ward placement. And I'm not sure that they can actually see the Alliance ward there. I think it might be just a little bit out of range. We'll find that out though as Alliance start to move forward. You see that they're actually going to have the duo lane on the bottom side of the map. Looks like Wicked going to take or look for that one versus one in the top lane. Although, Romeo wandering around down there, we do indeed see that it can't actually see it. Copenhagen Wolves can see the vision. Alliance can't see Copenhagen Wolves' yep. ward. So in terms of CW, they do have that small vision advantage, and you can see them grouping up uh, to go for this red buff invade. So this is going to potentially just delay Shook. There's no implication of a lane swap in this scenario. Copenhagen Wolves didn't even get the ward. Just wandered on straight through it. So they will be aware of that, and it looks like Haltard is actually, uh, once again, <laughs> going to ignore the ward. So, cool story, bro. Yeah, save that gold for later. That's what I'm going to go What with. I do like, though, is in the bottom lane, Youngbuck, with the assistance of Woolite, is going to secure their own red buff. So it is a buff denial, as well as a uh, delay on the side of Shook and Nif. Nif is obviously going to get to lane late, but the trade-off is the fact that Woolite is going to be, you know, coming to lane very late himself. They're going to jump on Froggen. Oh, going straight in there. The prison comes down, but I think Froggen might have enough to survive this one. And the Contaminate comes out, burning down there as well. Poison ticking away, but Froggen survived. But that was a scary moment for Alliance. Very scary indeed. Froggen's flash is burned, but count on bird both flash and ignite for that. Now Shook is the next target. And Kaltar coming across and forcing an early flash out of Alliance and doing so well about this. They need to be careful here. Froggen's still very low, not recalling. And then the prison Lee goes in and Airwax gets the first blood for the Wolves. This is a very different style for the Wolves that we're seeing. And so far it's caught Alliance completely off guard. Based purely on the champion picks that they have, because Twitch plus Brahm are such good champions at picking and surprising your opponent. Look, they've got Shook now. Oh. Going low as well. Woolite was a bit scared there. I've actually been locked up by Nami if it have gone anywhere near turret range, but 
Another little bit of a let off there for Alliance as Shuck went low. Didn't have his flash available because he used it just before that to get away from uh, the invade from the Copenhagen Wolves in the jungle. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to keep an eye on the average levels of both of these teams. Because of the fact that uh, Copenhagen Wolves are roaming and trying to set these ganks up, Tabs has been solo farming a lane. So he's got more experience than what Willite will have. Even though Copenhagen Wolves have got that additional kill, because they've been moving around the lane, it becomes a, a battle of who can get the most experience and CS, especially for champions like Jax and Ryze. So, it looks like the lane's now going to somewhat standardize, with Kowtar putting himself in a 1v2, and Copenhagen Wolves putting their AD carry and support in the mid lane. Another reason I like this little move from the Wolves is if Woolites and Unlimited want to go to support Airwax or go to the side lanes, they have more options to go through their jungle and also to invade Alliance's jungle. So the makings of an aggressive map-based uh, positional play from the Wolves. I saw that. The bottom lane of Alliance. Feeling, I think, a little bit uh, unsafe. Unsafe is a German word. I don't know where <laughs> that one came from there. Good job, Joe. Speaking too much German these days. But forcing them back. And actually, Young, we're going to go aggressive onto Wicked here. Let's get the stun down. But Wicked actually turning things around. This could be a close one if they decide to go all in. Young, look, dives across. Wicked forced to use his flash away. And that was a close one again. Very strong start for the Copenhagen Wolves. We talked about how Brown can move around the map, and he's already running to the top lane. If Wicked had not recalled, Unlimited would have considered going for that tower dive, and he's got the support of Airwax. Now, this is especially important for Alliance because their support, their numbers, comes from the bottom lane with Tabs and Nif, and they don't have the ability to, you know, move halfway across the map at a very quick pace. So if Copenhagen Wolves keep punishing and keep invading, they can even tower dive. There's a minion wave in the top, and it looks like they're going for it. Oh, now we're going to start stacking that passive up. And when I say start, they start, and then they stop straight away. Wicked able to clear out that minion wave and stop the wolves coming right under it. They're actually farming between the towers here, and Alliance are going to want to stop Airwax from doing that. Unlimited has stuck around as well, and now it looks like they're going to be roaming towards that middle lane. Yeah, so Froggen's having a difficult time against Woolite. Uh, purely because Woolite is just getting those auto attacks down using his passive fairly effectively. And if Froggen keeps trying to trade with Woolite, obviously he's going to burn through his mana pool and he loses it. The one thing that Froggen is doing well is farming under his tower. He's got a 14 CS lead over Kowtard, who's currently trying to friend off both Tabs and Nif. So we'll see which mid laner and which duo comes out ahead because Woolite is falling behind Tabs thanks to that added uh, poke damage that he's trying to put down on Froggen. So Unlimited again, looking like he's going to wander. Are they going to try and get in for a second time behind Frog? And there is a ward down. Unlimited will scan it out. There is the cocoon landing as well. But Shook needs to be really careful. That's a lot of damage. Stunt comes down. Shook going to have to repel. But he's coming right back on top of them. Have they got the damage? They do. This Airwax have picked up the kill. Two kills for Airwax in the opening stages of the game. Thanks to a very aggressive, very intelligent uh, invades. Unlimited is, is playing a, a, a roaming support. Yes, he is a level down uh, behind Nif, and he doesn't have any GP10, but he is giving gold to Airwax thanks to the fact that he's roaming and the pressure and the presence that he is applying. So very good play from Copenhagen Wolves, but the question is, can they keep it up? If they get the outer turrets down, how do they continue the aggressive plays if they extend this lead even further? Yeah, that's the, the real question for me on this one. We've, we've seen the Wolves get ahead before, they struggle to close out some of the games that they've actually won when they've started to fall behind or been a little bit unsafe, which is the right word this time. Uh, they've sometimes let those leads kind of slip away from them, just looking like they weren't really sure what the, the overall plan was and what the next move was. So that's going to be, especially against, uh, against Alliance here, their decision making has got to be really on point. Yeah, and, and again, you know, even though Alliance are two kills down. If you look at CS, they're winning top lane, they're winning mid lane, they're winning um, AD carry, and there's four separating the junglers. Now, you do have to count in the fact that Airwax has those kill gold, of course, but Alliance are still keeping up from a mechanical standpoint, and they're only 500 gold behind. So, yes, it feels like Copenhagen Wolves are making all the plays, and they are definitely dictating the tempo of this game. But the moment Copenhagen Wolves slip up, or the moment one of those invades goes wrong, Alliance can turn it around. Alliance can punish a bad dive or a bad engage, and we'll see if this is the turn. Doesn't look, look like this. it, though. Oh, going in for Frog, and he wisely just 
delayed his move back there so that the Q from Airwax wouldn't connect onto him. Airwax still level 5 though, so he doesn't have the kick available to really control Frog, and Frog has already got his ultimate, so underneath the tower, that shockwave could be dangerous. Wicked actually going to dive on through on towards Youngbuck, who turns around, puts in the stun. Wicked falling a little bit low from that one, and Youngbuck coming out on top of that trade. So trading uh, ultimates for ultimates, and you know, it really felt like Wicked was just trying to shove the wave more than anything else. Um, ends up getting, you know, a, a bit more damage from Youngbuck than he was anticipating, but holding his own, grabs himself that Giant's Belt, and look at the movement now from Copenhagen Wolves. They've grouped up around the Dragon Pit, and they're continuing this, this jungle invade game where both Unlimited and Airwax are just trying to get in Alliance's face and trying to make their life very difficult. So Woolite, he's got the support and they've caught Frogger just a little. Oh, this is going to be a lot of damage and a flash was burned there by Frogger. Having to get away to safety, you know that if that passive of Braum would have been procced and stunned up under his tower, then he was facing a bit of a problem. Meanwhile, Youngbuck's come back into lane, gone Vamp set to double Doran's blade, has used his teleport here, Wicked's is still available, so that could become a factor. And that all stems from Wicked's engage with his Dragon's Descent, because he cleared the wave out and bought time for him to go back by and run back to lane. Oh, the try dive Shook. Yeah, going in there once again, the kick coming down. Shook actually reacting really quickly there with a flash. Gonna get the cocoon down as well. Can he get on top of Unlimited? He had the ball. Maybe looking for a shockwave setup, but nothing happening there. But the Wolves trying again, and they're gonna get the tower for it this time. So that dive, even though it didn't get a kill, they got the flash out of Shook, and they were able to secure their first tower of the game. So it's quite smart. It's not over yet. They still want Froggen. Unlimited coming in, and that could be a good shockwave coming down to Woolite, but it's not really got damage, and Froggen is gonna go down. Woolite picks up his first kill of the game. This is a completely different Wolves. They're looking really strong. Yes, it is, and they are playing with a purpose. The one thing that I really like about this setup is while Copenhagen Wolves have been super aggressive and have been in Alliance's jungle the entirety of this game, Youngbuck and Kautard have been doing their best to CS. Kautard is obviously suffering because he's you know, in a 1v2 setup, but Ryze and Jax are in lane, they are getting levels, and they're trying to get as much CS as they can. Copenhagen Wolves are going to secure this dragon uncontested, and they're going to extend that gold lead to around 3,000 which is very, very good for 10 minutes. This is the number eight team that has only picked up three wins in six weeks, seven weeks in fact. And they are pushing Alliance around in the laning phase. Really strong start by the Copenhagen Wolves. Wasn't expecting such a strong start, but at the same time, I think the Wolves themselves realized that, guys, we need to step this up. This, this current trend that we've got, only three wins on the board needs to really change around. And so far, they've made some good steps to making that work out here in their final, uh, in their first game of today's Wicked here again, gonna go towards Youngbuck who pops his ultimate Unlimited, coming from the backside as well, so Wicked might have to be a little careful, Froggen actually coming around as well, Shuk will now join in, as Youngbuck will leap strike away, Wicked's got his ulti available, are they gonna try and dive it? I there don't was, think so. There was no shockwave for Froggen, so I think that had to be a, a hesitation factor. With the minion wave collecting to the tower, if the wolves stick around, there is still the possibility of a dive. Dragon's Descent is up for Wicked, but he's going to back away from this one. And Unlimited, as manly as Braum is, just forces him away. The thing that I like about uh, the Wolves' play is they haven't relented. Even when their dives have failed and their skill shots have missed, oh. they carry on. And we'll see if Tabs can get away. Oh, there is the flash going to come out. But they managed to land the Q and then they kick right back into Kautard who will finish this one off. That's his airwax that gets it. Puts himself at 3 0 1 on the killing spree. And I said that Airwax surely will be a big factor in this game, and so far it's really paid off. Right now, Wicked is in trouble as well. Unlimited gonna go in, actually getting knocked back there. He's trying to man this one up with the shield and have a go at Wicked, who turns around. Meanwhile, Nip gonna be caught out. Here comes Woolite from the side. Good bubble on to Woolite, but he won't save him. So, four kills now for Airwax. In the previous setup, he was trying to let that last hit go to count hard, and unfortunately, it didn't work out. It was a very good flash kick which I didn't even think he was going to do, which allowed them to get their kill onto tabs. You do have to think that if Airwax is going to continue this level of performance, he needs that gold to be going onto the carries. You need Twitch, Jackson, Rise to be the super beefy, super farmed members of Copenhagen Wolves if they want to continue this dominance in the mid to late game. But they've got their second tower, they've got a bigger gold lead, and there's no sign 
that Copenhagen Wolves are stopping. That's another bust deal oh, they got Nip got to get caught out completely by this one. The kill from Elwax has landed. No follow through though. Was already underneath the turret. Wicked meanwhile may be forced to back away completely from this top lane. TP is still not up, so he seems a bit reluctant to leave this lane, knowing he'll miss a lot of farm if he does. Yeah, this is the first time I would say in, in a few weeks where Alliance have been behind by a significant margin and they need to play the catch-up game. This is something that Alliance, I feel, would be familiar with in the spring split, where they were struggling, where they did have troubles. And we need to see if they still have that ability to dig down, to rotate around the map, and to force objectives. Something that SK does very well when they're in scenarios like this is group up and either tower dive their opponents or react to their opponents when they're pushing side lanes. And I think Alliance, they made a gesture of that earlier where they were grouping up for a potential dive or kill on Young Buck, and obviously it was thwarted by Unlimited's presence. Well, I didn't recall as I thought it was going to be down in this bottom lane. Instead, he sticks around, gets himself some more, more farm, and has actually got more at the moment than that off tabs, plus that 1-0-1 one, one scoreline. Look at this, the Wolves again grouping up, looking for a bit of a pick, but I'm not sure that they're going to get it here. There's a couple of wards down already from Alliance. That's a good pink ward, though, from the Wolves to clear out blue buff. Yeah, very, very smart play. And, you know, we, we talked about the levels. We talked about how we need to track how the team's oh. doing, and Wolves are actually ahead in most of the metrics. Very good cocoon from Shook is probably going to save Frog, and I think he, he most likely was going to get away. He does have Flash, and a Flash over the wall. So, Copenhagen Wolves, just by sheer presence and positioning, force a summoner spell out of Froggen, and they're keeping this up, they're keeping this level of control up, and very importantly, they're keeping their vision up to allow them to keep making these aggressive plays. I think Unlimited needs to grow a spectacular moustache as well, because he is doing incredibly well, this whole roaming Brom, which has been so effective for them up until now. Interested to see whether that can continue for them. We have seen a couple more items coming in. See, Blade of the Ruin King is now done for Warlight. On the other side, Tab's going for Trinity Force as his first item here on Cogmore. Yeah, and Unlimited's foregone any of those GP10 items. Yes, he's got a Sidestone, which you could argue is GP10. We'll get back to that as Wicked is fighting Young Buck. And he might actually be able to take him down with this one. This is a lot of damage coming in from Wicked. He's going to have to go underneath the tower. Has his flash available. Will flash in there. One more should do it. Youngbuck will jump off to the wall. And here comes Unlimited to save the day once again. And Youngbuck getting away there with just a slither of health remaining. Yeah, you can definitely see the moustache growing in Unlimited's face because that is such a good play. Once again, being in the right place at the right time. And while it's Airwax that is securing the kills, it has been Unlimited's presence and movement that has really allowed that to happen. He's been involved in a few of the kills, and what I really like about Unlimited is he's involved in the tower dives, he's involved in the defenses, and he's reading Alliance's movements very, very effectively. Doesn't need to be a tiny bit careful, though, because he is, in theory, up against the top laner alone. But nevertheless, uh, Youngbuck is going to make it back to the lane, and he's got his Blade of the Rune King completed, so Youngbuck also hitting those important oh. item spikes. Oh, well, I'm going to sneak up on Tabs, and there's a surprise. He's going to pop the rat tat tat That's a lot of damage coming in. Tabs is going to go down. The tidal wave from the side. Good bubble. Actually, no, the bubble missed. Woolite turning it around there. Ignite was down. Airwax will come in to support, and Woolite's going to survive. Good pick kill. Very smart play, and this is what Woolite should be looking to do elsewhere as well. He's picked up a kill on Tabs. He's going to delay his next item even further. And what's even more important is the timing of that kill because as soon as they've taken Tabs down, it's allowing Copenhagen Wolves to get another dragon and extend this gold lead even further. I am, I am absolutely shocked because the Wolves have never played this well all year long. And Woolite, he wants Nif now. And he's probably going to get him here as well. There's a bubble coming out, doesn't connect. And the finisher, Woolite now on the killing screen. We saw him there on the camera. Gave a big shout. And now Youngbuck, though, could be in trouble. Froggen's coming in. Shockwave is available. There it is, in position to finish off. They don't even need to use the Shockwave. Didn't need it at all. Youngbuck just gets dropped by lines. And we touched on how one of the only tools the Lions will have to make up this gold deficit is the tower dives, and they pull it off on the isolated member in the top lane. So Alliance are going to get their first tower of the game, going to pull back the gold difference, and the rest of the Wolves are now pushing the other lanes. Look at bottom inner turret. Look at mid inner turret. Joe, in the pregame, I called out Airwax as well as Woolites and said, since losing Amazing and Forgiven, these two guys need to step up. 
401301. They've definitely told me to sit down and shut up. They have. And, uh, well, you can't really argue with his performance. Both of them doing so well. And now the Wolves continue to pressure on this inner turret. They're going to take that. Alliance can't defend it. And where has this Copenhagen Wolves team been for the last seven weeks? I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. And I, you just can't do anything but really praise the decision making. They've got a massive lead with a very good late game uh, team composition. And yes, Alliance scales incredibly well at the same time. Cogmo, Elise, uh, Cogmo Oriana, Shivana will do very well in the late game. And I feel like in terms of team fights, Alliance should have a little more um, in their back pockets because of all of this CC. But if they group up at all, and Bram gets in with a multi-man knockup uh, from Glacial Fisher and, and Young Buck gets in there, that's scary. Alliance, let's see if they can get Wool out. The answer's no. Nope, stealthy up. Getting out of that one, of course. The stealth, one of the little changes to him for 4.10 that we thought may dissuade a few people. And actually it has. We've seen less uh, Twitch play in 4.10 when we compare that with 4.9, but honestly, we'll like showing here that he is most definitely viable. Getting up to that Blade of the Ruin King, catching out both Tabs and Nif here in that bottom lane. Sarah 301, and now he's got a Ghost Blade. Yeah, it's all about the picks for Alliance. Because they are, are very far behind in terms of itemization on their primary carries, if Alliance are able to force Copenhagen Wolves' hand and group up for tower dives or, you know, force a rotation and then punish a misposition, that's how Alliance can make this gold uh, gold lead back. But they also need to avoid getting caught up. Because look at Woolite. He's looking for rat tat tat Oh, oh now Wax is coming in from the side. They're going to try and kick Tabs back. The flash came in. Woolite did manage to get one kill. And now they're going for more. Shook is already really low. The Q not quite got the range there. And I think Alliance might be able to walk out of this one. Brogan just coming back will get the slow on to Kowtard. And Unlimited Airwax, though, is still flanking around the side. They may go for this one. Unlimited still has his ultimate available. Airwax still has his kick as well. So if they can get in there, kick one man back, they may be able to get something started. Tabs is going to walk in. This is a face check. This is not good news for them. Airwax does get one. Shockwave finally comes down. But there's the knockout of Unlimited. Tabs going to be focused here and killed off. And the Copenhagen Wolves picking up more kills. This is exquisite play from Copenhagen Wolves. This all started from Woolite. Surprise. Rising Alliance. He blew Nif up before Nif could even throw the tidal wave down. And then the Copenhagen Wolves just chased in all the right ways and managed to pick up even more kills. Five kills on Airwax, five kills on Woolite. They grabbed their fourth tower of the game and they're going to continue the siege. Alliance cannot team fight. They are so far behind that the only way they can win a straight up fight is if they catch Copenhagen Wolves completely by surprise. And for the time being, I don't think that's possible because the Wolves have just done such a good job at Vision, have done such a good job at moving around the map, and they are making Alliance look like SK Gaming yesterday. The way Alliance punished SK, Copenhagen Wolves are punishing Alliance. Well, I mean, everyone I think expected this to be the complete opposite, that Alliance doing this to the Copenhagen Wolves, but all showing that they might be down at the bottom of the league and only three wins under their belt up until now, but it's not over until the end of the season comes around and they're playing for their livelihoods here and you can see that there seems to be a, a newfound motivation for the Wolves. It's also almost like someone's given a kick up the backside and said, guys, get it together because we can't afford to keep going like this. 20 minutes into the game and the Wolves have still not let up this, this presence in Alliance's jungle and they're going to continue pre uh, making moves. Copenhagen Wolves are going to discover this ward from Alliance and Alliance can't contest. I mean, Alliance really can't pick these fights. They're, you know, 8,000 gold down. There or thereabouts. And we haven't seen, we haven't seen any initiations. We haven't seen any plays from Alliance because they haven't been able to. They've been playing reactively and they've been playing at the Wolves' tempo. Baron, though. Something that could easily change this game. Well, like, oh, he's playing dangerously. Actually, he's going to catch out Shook. That's a decent chunk of damage. Are they going to go back towards Baron now after doing that damage to the Alliance jungler? I think Baron would be such a, a good way to lose this game now for the Copenhagen Wolves. I have to say, 
Nope. Because we've seen it before, but they're doing a good job here of keeping Alliance really busy That's a in that mid lane. We are going to see the damage coming down. Shockwave used were unlimited, tanking up, and meanwhile, the Baron is going lower and lower and lower. Will they be able to finish it off in it's time? It. They do. The walls pick up the Baron, and another great move for them. Meanwhile, Warlight's going to stealth up once again. Can he catch anyone out? Who's he going to go for? He's going to go for Tap. The damage from Ratatat Tap, but a good bubble for the disengage. Well, they're losing this tower. Surely. Alliance got completely baited into that. 5v2, they threw a bunch of ultimates at the Wolves, didn't even get the kill. So a 23 minute Baron for the Copenhagen Wolves, it opens them up to an inhibitor turret, an inner turret rather, and um, Alliance were already playing passive, were already playing defensive against the Wolves. With the 10,000 gold lead and Baron buff, Alliance need to turtle under the inhibitor turrets and not leave for another 15 minutes to try and make up this gold difference and become relevant again, because they're simply being outclassed. Being destroyed. Nothing really. There's, there's no real kind way to say it from Alliance's side, but the Copenhagen Wolves coming absolutely flying into this game. You heard from Youngbuck, special tactics may be needed against Limes, and they've got nothing to lose coming into this game. And maybe that's what's been a problem for the Copenhagen Wolves, that they've had all this pressure on them, knowing that things aren't going so well. Maybe they needed a kind of pressure off scenario where no one expected them to win. 90% of you guys on lolesports.com voted for Alliance to win this game. It seems like these 90% votes seem to be a bit of a curse for some of these teams. It, it, okay, if this game continues going the way that it is, Alliance will have lost two games where the public opinion was 90% and above. It happened against the Super Hot Crew at the beginning of the split. It's happening right now in front of your eyes. And those special tactics, we assumed, were going to be picks. We assumed they were going to be unique champions because Young Buck is not averse to playing oddball champions. And it wasn't that. It was the 2v1 mid lane. And it was just a very, very heavy map-based strategy. And thanks to the Wolves actually finding the kills and more importantly, maintaining vision control, that's what's allowed them to punish Alliance. Every time you look at that mini-map, there is one, two, three, six, seven wards down on the mini-map. And it's just so good for them. 71%, it's funny how 25 minutes can change everyone's mind. Hard to argue, I actually expected it to be more like 90% for the Wolves uh, at this point, considering how this game has now gone. The Wolves just waltzing on in, finishing off that inner turret, looking now maybe towards the inhibitor. Will like gonna get bubbled up, Unlimited gonna block everything out though. It's very important for Nif to time his tidal wave. If he throws that down into Unlimited's uh, unbreakable shield, it will just completely mitigate that spell. So Alliance need to be baiting out the unbreakable shield from Unlimited and then uh, in and Shook's in trouble. Shook getting caught, last second repel though will mean that he can stay alive but he's forced away that least five versus four underneath the turret, actually four versus four because look at Jax, Youngbuck is pushing out that bottom lane as well, TP available if he needs to get in for a fight. Yeah, we need to see how Alliance decides to defend this. No. Uh, key spells have been used yet. And Tabs is fighting so far behind. He's only got a Cutlass and Triforce. That's a good bubble. Two-man bubble, but there we see, actually, uh, Airwax going very deep onto it. Tidal Wave does come out. Unlimited uses. Also, there's a two-man strong wave. He's got the AD carry. There's also someone to heal being used. And there's a turn around. Will I dominate him? Is he going to get shook as well? I think there's enough damage from the poison. It's a double for Will I, putting him up to 7-0-1. And this is the in him. They're definitely going to get the in him with Froggen and Shook down. They going to secure the objective, it may not be over, as Youngbuck has got a minion wave on the bottom half of the turret. There's a minion wave pushing up the middle lane as well. The Copenhagen Wolves have got 20 seconds before Alliance are back at full force, and they are punishing the base of Alliance. Yep, this is going to be a second inhibitor for the Copenhagen Wolves, leaving just that mid lane, which as you rightly pointed out, is pushing in favour of the Wolves. And a swift move there, and I thought with that shockwave coming down, with the bubble starting it off, that the Copenhagen Wolves might be in a little bit of trouble, but they're just so far ahead in this game that it's even hard when the Lions get a good opener like that to finish off the kills. There are no words to describe what is happening. countdown has been jumped on, but it's Shook, the one that you are in fear of his life. We'll see if he can get away. No. Nope. Nope. Well, like, gonna get that one legendary now at 8 0 1. And they're just gonna bully their way in onto the turret. You see the Alliance backing away from it completely, knowing that they can't stand and defend. And they've only got the Nexus turret and the Nexus left. I, I have no idea where Copenhagen Wolves have found this level of performance. They have just melted Alliance in every single regard. Individual play, team play, 
snap movements. I mean, even the swag flash away from the bubble, and Woolite is going to look for more. And there we see Wicked diving in. They use the shockwave. They don't even get the support down, and Woolite is just dumping on them from the backside there. Couldn't quite get the damage to finish off another kill, but he may have done enough damage to force them away and have a good go on these in turrets. Here he goes once again around the side, going to go on towards Tab, who's surely going to go down. No, he seems to have got away, at least for now, back onto the fountain. Got no health remaining, a kill for Rise, and this is surely the game for the Wolves. They're very, very low though, they need to be a little bit careful here. Well, they're going to rip through those Nexus turrets. First one already going down, second one full HP, but Alliance coming back out of the base in full health. I think that's enough of that push now for the Wolves. There are so many super minions for Alliance to deal with, they don't even have the items to clear these waves super quickly. Towers are going down, there's nothing left for the Alliance base <laughs> to defend. They've held onto it, oh the turrets, the minions got it! There's only a Nexus remaining at 28 minutes on the clock. And Copenhagen Wolves are going to close this game out at some point in the not too distant future. And if you'd have said to me, Joe, Alliance are going to get destroyed today by the Copenhagen Wolves in maybe half an hour game and only get one kill and one turret, I probably would have just laughed at you and said, I don't know what you are even thinking about there because this outcome did not look possible considering the form that both of these teams have been. Alliance here struggling with the Super Minions in their own base right now with that Nexus already taking a little bit of a beating. And look at this, the Wolves have healed up. They spent all the gold that they had. Some of them are sat on 3,000 gold after that, and they're gonna come straight back in and try and win it. There's next to nothing Alliance to, can do to defend this push. Copenhagen Wolves, looks like they're just gonna focus the Nexus There down. we go, Dive comes in. We are gonna see the Shockwave coming out, but Shock gonna be focused. Woolite now legendary. There is a Dive onto the Fountain. Does go down, but Woolite gets another kill. Nexus is finished off, and in less than half an hour, the Copenhagen Wolves pull off the Shock with the split zone far and take down the Lions. Wow. Now that howl is something we have not heard in a while. Woolite. Woolite was ecstatic after that win. 11-0-2. His team played phenomenally around him and the Copenhagen Wolves completely decimates Alliance. Alliance never get a chance to do anything. They never get a chance to fight back. I'm a little bit lost for words from this one. I did not expect today of all days to go like this. And it wasn't even a close, I don't want to say hard ball because the Copenhagen Wolves obviously came into this very prepared, but it wasn't a close game. Alliance didn't really have anything to say about it. As I said, they got two kills, one of which was on to Airwax right at the end with the help of the Fountain. They got one tower in this game. They were almost 20,000 gold behind by the end of it. And Alliance, whether they underestimated the Copenhagen Wolves here somewhat, I'm not sure. I'd be, I'd be very interested to hear about that. Truthfully, even if they did, it was the strategy that the Wolves put in place yeah. that won them the game. This wasn't a matter of Alliance uh, making mistakes that cost them. Uh, uh, the Wolves forced their hand. The Wolves were in the jungle, they were invading, the vision was down, they had a roaming support the entire game. Airwax spent more time in Alliance's jungle than he did in his own jungle. It was a very clear strategy going forward. And, you know, in the pregame, I was very, very opinionated that for me, Airwax and, and um, Woolite are the people that need to step up. In the spring split, it was amazing and forgiven that helped carry wins. And if this is what Airwax and, and um, Woolite are capable of doing, they need to just find that juice, whatever they had before the, the, the game, and do it every match. And they definitely told you to shut up and sit yeah. down in this one. 11 0 2 for Woolite, 5 1 8 for Airwax by the end of it. A fantastic upset win by the Copenhagen Wolves. Now we're going to go over to Shocks, who's on stage with the Wolves as I'm sure very happy Young Buck. Thank you very much, Joe. Um, first off, congratulations. Unbelievable. Tell me how good it felt to be able to do that howl again here on stage after that win. Well, it has been a while, so it felt very amazing, especially after the first two losses that we thought that we actually had a chance of winning. We go into this match uh, knowing that if we play their game, it will be very tough. So we said we're going to try to surprise them, and Woolite actually came up with the idea of giving uh, himself the red buff and ganking level two. And we just wanted to take Shook out of the game with all the invades we did and constantly putting pressure on them. All right, so you have that plan in your head, and it does work out in the, beginning, in the beginning. So at what point in the game do you know we can just do anything we want right here? Uh, for me, it was hard to see. I was very busy with Wicked. He was playing very well, and he knew the matchup. So I had, had my problems, and I was just focused on my own game. 
I didn't really have anything to do with this strategy. So it was mostly uh, the jungler and mid lane uh, roaming a lot. And tell me a little bit more in the scope of things, because this was an awesome victory against the number one team, but still only four wins up in the season. So what's the thought process going into the next games in the season here? Well, we're trying to aim for a playoff spot right now. It's pretty hard, especially after the first two losses, but we said that if we can get one or two wins today, then we still have a chance to go there. Yeah, you actually said, uh, said on Twitter, we're going to go full EU LCS today and beat SK and Alliance. One down, what will be the key to taking down SK Gaming? Uh, maybe not as hard of a cheese as we did this game, but uh, maybe something different than usual. All right, well, thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you very much. Whew, what a game. We're going to need a break after that. We're going to upgrade our footwear to Boots of Swiftness so we can be back in three and a half for Millennium versus the Super Hot Crew. It's a Jax, 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 it's